Welcome, Negronis with Nord, episode number 76. We have a very special guest today. LA's most handsome man, potentially. <laughs> Model, Sephora squad member, creator, fitness guru, all of the things. Yeah. Mo, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so for joining much. us. Thank you for that introduction. Thank you I, so much. Uh, I, we were joking earlier, um, you're, you're from LA, mm. uh, which sucks that you came here and it rained all the time, but it is, it is partially payback because I was saying every single time I went to LA last year, it poured rain the entire yeah. time. So bad. maybe it's your fault. Maybe I, you I, think, I think so, it's, it's payback, payback <laughs> time. Sure. So you were here for Sephora, how was your first Sephora? It was it was amazing. Disregarding the weather, it was. I think everything else was really really good. But I think you guys did amazing in terms of just organizing and how you guys were able to switch things right away. I think you guys did really well. But I had. An I didn't do time. anything. Yeah. I, did not, I did literally. <laughs> Your team, that's yeah, exactly. They did amazing. I paid the bills, but I didn't do anything yeah, else. No, no. I was just like, I feel bad. I know they're not sleeping right now, but <laughs> everything else worked out very smoothly. They so. did a great job. They were. Lots of pivoting last week, yeah, um, but the squad was was really flexible as well. I feel like mm -hmm. we got all the content. It was exciting. Yeah. Who was your favorite brand? Like, what was the brand you were most excited to see at Sephora? Youth to the people. Okay. I love Youth to the people. Um, Summer Friday as well. One of my favorite brands. Yeah. I just tried out their moisturizer and it was amazing. They're so good. Mariana has been on the show. Before. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. She's amazing. Sweetheart. Yeah. Shout out, Mariana. We are going to talk about you, we're going to talk about skincare, we're going to talk mm -hmm. about the industry, all the things today. Let's start off with just a bit of who you are, how did you get started in this space, you know, what, what, what should they know about you? Yeah, so my name is Mohamed Bai. I was born and raised in Gambia, West Africa. I moved to the U.S. in 2010 for sure. And, you know, right away I was super excited when I first moved. But, you know, quickly my excitement turned into kind of like a bit of a horror because I started to get picked on because of my dark skin, because of my accent. And so it took a toll on me a lot, you know, and because of that, I struggled a lot with, you know, self-confidence. And I was very insecure with a lot of things. Like, I felt like even having conversations and being able to look at somebody face to face, I wasn't able to do because I was just so cautious. Like, okay, what is this person thinking? What is this person thinking about? And, you know, fast forward, you know, I went to college. Um, and then right after college, I just was like, even while I was in college, I was like, I really want to start talking about my experience and helping so many other, you know, people that look like me because I know so many other, you know, people are struggling with the same things that I was struggling with. So that's when I first started my YouTube channel, talking about dark skin, talking about how to appreciate and how to love your melanin and, and things that are short. Kind of like got into social media, started modeling and, I, I saw like how much confidence I, I gained and I saw like how my work was impacting so many other people. You know, people like, you know, you make me feel so comfortable. You make me feel like I can do it. You mm -hmm. make me feel like I can appreciate myself and, and deserve to feel beautiful. And from that, I just started and, you know, that led us to, to here. Yeah. yeah. So you started with YouTube, mm -hmm. then probably onto Instagram, onto TikTok. Yeah. When did it start like really working for you? You know, when did when did I feel like most content creators, you know, they start from this place of like wanting to help or yeah. just being interested in creating content, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have a moment where you feel like, oh shit, like I might be like good at this. This might like this might be something I could do for a job. What was yeah. that moment for you? For me, I I always knew that I wanted to do content creators and I always knew I wanted to be in a position where I'm able to help people. So to me, it was a non-negotiable. I'm like, no matter what I'm doing, I'm, I know for a fact that I'm always gonna be doing this. It was probably once I, when, the first time that I got like a TV gig to do like an award show for BET and you know, the younger me would have never even imagined being in this position, let alone now. Yeah. So I think that's, that's when I started to realize that, wow, I can actually really go far in this industry. But overall, my, my goal has always been to touch the end user and to, give back to my community so that that has always been my driving force and so um it it kind of like i had my focal point on that and nothing else was going to deter me away mm -hmm. from it so i didn't even know this was it was possible to make a career out of this so you know i just knew for a fact that i always wanted to do something um great moving on forward yeah what is what is your community like is it um you know is it mostly men like what's i feel like sometimes 
you know, a lot of the men that are creating in the beauty space, right. the demographics of their audience can be really different. What is, yeah. what is, what is your community kind of look like? Who are you speaking uh, to? Yes, I would say my community is a 60 to 40. Yeah. So before, it's funny because before when I used to just, you know, post modeling pictures and whatnot, it was probably like maybe 70 to 30, 70 women, yeah. 30 men. But now that I've been talking about a lot more topics that I feel like men can relate to, my demographic definitely has shifted to a more of a balance to where uh, actually more men than uh, women currently. Yeah. yeah. Creators and influencers ask and want us to talk about is like, how do you, how do you transition your content into some, a new category? How do you, you know, introduce new topics that you're interested in? And, you know, you started by talking about, you know, belonging and accepting yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, you moved on to maybe introducing modeling and, right. and photography, you know, then a pivot to beauty is like, uh, is, is a, like a fairly large one. So I'd love to mm -hmm. talk about like, you know, and maybe we'll, we'll focus on beauty um, as that's been more recent, like right. applying for Sephora squad, you know, which, is, which means that like, there's gonna be a lot of, you know, contractually a lot, you have to talk about skincare and beauty yeah. a lot, right? Mm -hmm. How do you think about introducing that? How did you get your audience ready for that? And what's the reaction been? Um, the reaction has been actually amazing. I feel like the way that I create content, I create content, like I said, just based on the end user. And what I realize is that, you know, I'm having a, a human experience just like anybody else's. So I don't want to put myself in a category or in a box, even though I, I love fashion, I love skincare, but I also, if I want to talk about mental health, if I want to talk about the struggles that I'm dealing with, I'm also like willing and more than open to talk about those things. So I feel like my audience is already so flexible in terms of me being able to jump from topic to topic without seeming like I'm talking about something that doesn't necessarily uh, relate to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much so creating content based on my own personal experiences. And so I realized that like, you know, my audience is very, you know, acceptable to anything that I'm talking about, whether it be, you know, talking about semen retention and all of these things that I feel like most men don't necessarily get to talk about. I'm able to talk about with my audience and I realized that even, you know, my woman audience, my women audience also, they're like, oh, you know, I've actually been thinking about, you know, exploring in those, you know, yeah. you know realms and things that are short. So my audience is very much so I feel like open to whatever I have to talk about or whatever content I, I get to create. That's the dream, right? That's great. Yeah. Um, do you think though about how to, you know, even with the skincare and the beauty work that you're doing, do you think about how to like, how to introduce it, right? Because if, if I am a skincare influencer and that's all I talk about, my audience is following me for skincare, right. I can just jump right into it, right? Mm -hmm. I can just be like, hey, okay, today we're gonna be talking about this new moisturizer, or we're gonna be talking about retinol or you know, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Do you have to like, do a little work in storytelling about like why should men care about skincare? You Abs know? Absolutely. I feel like that's that's currently one of my biggest uh, tasks, taking back so much of the, the conditioning that men have been going through in terms of like, you know, taking care of your, yourself when it comes to grooming or hygiene and things of that sort. So a lot of the times I feel like my content is very educational and just having them understand that it's okay to take care of yourself. It's okay to want to look good. Mm -hmm. It's okay to want to care for your, your face. You know, all of these things are okay. So a lot of the times it is me having to kind of like just, you know, storytell and tell them why it's so important to do that and how it has helped me in terms of you know, boosting my confidence and knowing that I'm putting my best foot forward every time I walk into any room, yeah. you know? So yeah, definitely, um, yeah, I would say I definitely have to, you know, just talk them up a little bit and help them understand. And what about on the brand side? We have always had male influencers on Sephora Squad. Yeah. Uh, over five years, you know, that percentage has grown. Yeah. I think it's a category that they're interested in expanding, getting mm -hmm. more men into the stores and, and shopping there. Is there any education you're having to do on the brand side to say, hey, no, this is like, like, you know, if you're a skincare company, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we might do a campaign and, and this would be outside of Sephora, but right. it could be 20 influencers and it's 20 women, yeah, you know? Absolutely. I think that's what my agent and I are currently working on is how can we set up these meetings with these brands, you know, to where 
we are able to bring all the issues that I feel like men are facing when it comes to like just feeling like advertising or the products are not necessarily being marketed to them, whether it be the packaging or just feeling like, you know, they are left behind every single, mm -hmm. you know, step of the way. So I guess my, my manager and I are currently working on really just, you know, setting up these meetings and seeing how can we make men more inclusive or more included in anything that has to do with beauty related, whether that be a campaign. And it's, I feel like I, I don't understand why brands are not paying attention to this because it's like, there's a whole, you know, demographic of people that are just being shunned away and mm -hmm. being looked down upon, so to say. And I just feel like, from a from a from a business perspective, when it, when all it has to do is just a little bit of marketing to kind of like get these people on your on your mm -hmm. corner, why would you not do so? And yeah. you know, so my manager and I are figuring out the best way to to set up these meetings and and see how we can you know get everybody on board to you know get more males. And it doesn't even have to be about me. Right. You know, I just feel like there's so many other male influences that can be brought on a board. But I just feel like overall we are doing men a disservice by. Keep, um, continue to feel like we don't necessarily want to associate ourselves with anything beauty related. Yeah. Do you feel like your experience in the content you created initially, right, that feeling of not belonging, of like uh, feeling different, um, it, you know, is that like what is driving the passion behind trying to like get these industries to to accept this group more and understand that like this is something you can market to and can be part of your campaigns? and, and potential customers no absolutely like I said very much so all of the things that I do are very much uh, experience driven so I remember the first time that I ever felt comfortable and I wasn't even I wouldn't say comfortable to walk into a Sephora store was maybe two years two years and a half or three years mm -hmm. and for so I always saw, saw Sephora but I never really like understood what Sephora was for for me I always thought it was just makeup yeah you know and until this day every time I say something oh I work with Sephora that's the first thing you don't do makeup why do you mm -hmm. you know why what are you working with them on mm -hmm. you know and not realizing there's so many other things that they can get from Sephora you know but I, I felt like just the feeling of almost like intimidation walking into the store and the feeling of like, are people gonna judge me? Or are people gonna, you know, look at me like, what are you doing here? That is is one of the reasons why I was like, you know what? I do feel like men deserve to be represented in this mm -hmm. space because I don't want anybody else to walk into a store like Sephora that you know will cater to everybody. But from the outside, they may be, you know, looked up a, a different way. You know, yeah. I just want men to really feel like they can walk in there and really get all of their skincare and beauty needs. Because after all, skincare is healthcare. Like I like to say, yeah. everybody has skin, and it's gender neutral at the end of the day. You know, so I, I just feel like you know, you know, I, I just want men to feel more comfortable walking into space. Yeah. I don't want them to feel like how I felt. But at least I feel like with the experience that they will get, or at least with the stories that I'm able to tell, they can walk in there with a little bit more confidence and be like, you know what, Muhammad talks about how he walked into the Sephora and how they cater to him just like they cater to anybody mm -hmm. else. So they kind of like walk in there with a little bit less of an inferiority complex, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. And I mean, a big part of that is education, right? Like mm -hmm. walking into a place knowing, okay, I, I feel like I need a toner or I need moisturizer uh, or I want some concealer um, rather than just walking in and being like, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't know what I want. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like walking through, yeah. you know, this like, you know, looking at all of these like eyeshadow palettes, wondering like what the hell am I, I supposed to do with any of this, yeah. right? And I'm sure you've had a lot of, of people that you have influenced who are like, hey, I like, I never thought about this, right? I used the five in one yeah. product and, <laughs> uh, and like never thought, you know, I was putting hand lotion on my face for 15 years or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's a product that like, once you get guys to realize like, hey, you should invest in this mm -hmm. or like a nicer version of this that they kind of like, it like clicks and they, they get it? I feel like cleanser and moisturizer, so I would say those two very very important because like you just saying soap you know is, is something that is very very important but i feel like a lot of the time men resort to going back rubbing to a bar soap rubbing on their a face. Bar of soap you know <laughs> this is i'm not going to name any brands but certain <laughs> brands you while you're washing yourself i'm already feeling ashy yeah. i didn't even get out of the shower yet i'm already <laughs> feeling dry you know so i can only imagine put how that impact how that you know impacts my body let alone to my face but i yeah. just feel like 
I just want men to just understand that what you put on your body matters. Mm -hmm. You know, ingredients are very, very important to me. And I just feel like for the most part, we most men have to resort to men's skincare. We yeah. all know that's there's no such thing really. Yeah. You know, skincare works for anybody. But a lot of the times these brands found a loophole. They like, you know, this this demographic of people are not being marketed to, so let's just figure out a way to go there and, and you know, grab them up. But mm -hmm. most of the time I feel like they are not really, you know, putting the best ingredients and um, because it's not as regulated as the safe brands that mm -hmm. are in Sephora. So for the most part, they get away with using harsher chemicals and things of that sort. But I, I just want men to understand that what you put on your body matters and, you know, the quality is, is everything. So, yeah. you know, I would definitely say moisturizer and, and washer are definitely those two things that I get asked about the most. Yeah. But I also think that those are the very most important things, especially starting out a skincare journey. You just add a, you know, uh, SPF on there and you know you're good to go you're good to go there we go yeah you know start you know start doing some Botox when you maybe hit 30 <laughs> or so uh, you know preventative at first yeah. but then then it's just has to happen yeah, right, right. for you modeling versus being a creator as you look at like your revenue stream what's the like what's the percentage breakdown now are you are you mostly see yourself as a model mostly see yourself as an influencer what's I would say definitely more on the influencer side yeah. now. I still do modeling very much so, but I feel like most of my work is definitely taken up, most of my time is definitely taken up by content creation. Yeah, yeah. so let's, let's talk about platforms. You're on Instagram and TikTok. You have a bigger following on TikTok, but you're posting there less frequently. Yeah. Are you making a concerted effort to build your Instagram? Is there a different way you think about your TikTok? Are you doing the same kinds of content on both? What's, how do you balance the two platforms? So my TikTok just kind of <laughs> picked up out of nowhere, I, unexpected. And um, originally I was definitely more of an Instagram creator and I would just post whatever I found on TikTok. But I realized that my TikTok audience, they, they uh, consume content a little bit differently than my Instagram does. They like when I'm talking more on an educational you know, standpoint mm -hmm. and, and they are very much so also um, involved in everything that I'm doing holistically. What food do I eat? What workouts do I do? What you know, deodorant do I use? Mm -hmm. You know, what skincare products do I use? So I know that there's a lot. There's a lot more there, but I haven't really had since I guess in the last month or so. I gained maybe about 110,000 followers on TikTok, mm -hmm. and it was crazy. I definitely was not expecting that. It, it was something that came off of out of a watermelon video. I was uh -huh. just eating watermelon and <laughs> next thing you know, it just went crazy. But they came to my page, I think, expecting to find more of those, but they yeah. found so many other things. I have had so much videos back there where I was talking about mental health, where I was mm -hmm. talking about so many things that they probably were not expecting me to talk about. And because of that, those videos started to pick up. And you know, within a month span, I probably gained maybe like 13 million views. Yeah. And the original video only had like maybe 6 million yeah. that were not picked up. So yeah. all of my other videos started to pick up. And which made me believe that, you know, your, your audience will definitely find you. And mm. so now I'm just strategizing on how can I post better or how can I post more on, on TikTok mm. and uh, make sure that both of my audience, make sure both of my pages are getting the right amount of attention that yeah. they deserve. It's so exciting because you can have these viral moments and you can grow following really quickly, but mm -hmm. um, sometimes that audience can then leave you just as quickly, right? Yeah. And so now you have 300,000 followers and you're getting 5,000 views a video and mm -hmm. you're freaking out because it's like, yeah. um, it's hard to charge brands for that. And yeah. so is that part of your like going a little bit slower and trying to figure it out? Is that like, you know, you want this to be a more sustainable moment? Um, yeah, absolutely. I would say that, but also I'm very much so interested in the value that I'm giving to my audience. You know, it's, it's never been just about putting out content, putting out content just to, I get that that helps a lot mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, the engagement and things that are short. But I, I always want to make sure that whatever I'm putting out there is something that the end user can benefit from. So it's never just been about pumping out content. It's, you know, every content that I put out is strategically thought, thought about, you know, how can I, how can my audience look at it and be like, and become a better person from mm -hmm. it. And so that's, that's been my, my, my biggest thing. And it's, I guess now it's just figuring out how can I just provide more value, you know, rather than just worrying about being consistent. Mm -hmm. Because if it was just posting out content, I can do that, you know, easily. Right. But 
is is posting meaningful content that my audience can can you know really uh, make you know and uh, digest and and you know be better people yeah. from it. So I think you were like, you were putting something on watermelon. Right? Yeah, lemon. You were putting lemon on watermelon, right? And it's like, yeah. oh, I'm never going to eat watermelon the same, right? Yeah. I feel like sometimes when people have these viral hits, they think, okay, well, I, I should do more mm -hmm. of that, right? Yeah. Like, I should try and replicate that, right? Yeah. If I could just do that once a week or something, mm -hmm. I could have a million followers in six months, right? Do you feel that temptation? Do you feel that pull generally on these platforms to think like, oh, I, I need to make something that's going to like go viral? It's really nice to hear you have such a follower focused mindset and mm -hmm. community focused of like yeah. I want to provide value for them that's yeah. that's like our number one piece of advice on the show generally is to not lose sight of that but it's also really hard to not yeah. lose sight of that you yeah, know have you, have you felt that temptation have you felt the the pressure to like go viral and have yeah. these things that do you know get millions of views I have so much experience in terms of life and I realize that like people are you know a lot of people are struggling a lot of people are suffering with so many things, whether it be mental health. I, I talk about food a lot also. I talk about healthy foods that people can mm -hmm. benefit from, but that's something that I feel like people can go to the store and be like, okay, I'm gonna make a better choice rather than just, you know, um, resorting to or resorting to the same thing that I was that I used to do. So I would make a video talking about, you know, things that I eat and mm -hmm. things that I buy and things that are short. But um, I never really I never really thought about making another video like that. Maybe I will, but that's that's never been my my focus to go viral you know if i look at my i guess my follower count like right now is about two hundred thousand people on my instagram mm -hmm. and TikTok combined together mm -hmm. that's a lot of people yeah and so my focus is how can i serve these people as best as i possibly can if it was just going viral just you know mm -hmm. taking your shirt off and it it, it, it it will be done you know it's it's easy well i wouldn't but, go viral if i took my shirt off <laughs> Uh, myself, but yes, maybe for you that makes sense. You know, yeah. but I, I just be like, you know, just also building that community of people that are like-minded. Yeah. You know, and I want to definitely build a community of people that are wanting to make the world a better place. Yeah. You know, and so I don't take that lightly. So if if I just go viral and whatever the case may be, things, you know, it's it's all different type of people will come to my page, yeah. but I just want the right people to you know, help me grow through this journey we call life and, and I want to pour back into them as much as possible. So yeah. they are my top priority. Then, yeah. you know, getting new users to join my, my page. That's, that's lovely. One of the first times I think I became more aware of, of who you were, we were getting ready for the Sephora Squad launch event and um, Susanna, who runs the Sephora account, was like, oh, uh, one of the squad members has asked to give a toast at dinner and like wrote us this email and, and said he wanted to give a toast and sent a copy of what he was going to say. Is that okay? I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, of course. But like, that's not something that's, that's pretty, what's the word, like unusual. bold? <laughs> yeah, unusual. <laughs> then watching you interact in that whole weekend, I felt that, um, you know, you had a real awareness for, um, I think, who you wanted to talk to, mm -hmm. relationships you wanted to build, you know, lots of gratitude, making sure you were going up to the clients, thanking them. Um, just like talk to me about how, even as you thought about that weekend, mm -hmm. you know, um, with the whole Sephora team there and 70 squad members out in LA, like how, how conscious was the choice of being like, okay, this is what I want to get out of the weekend. This mm -hmm. is what I'm going to do. Or is this just kind of like who you are and how you operate? Yeah, that's, I would say it's how I am and how I operate. I very much so think of, like I said, people. I put people first before anything. And so when I you know, was thinking about the whole Sephora Squad event, the first thing I was like, you know, I, I do, I feel a bit intimidated. I don't know what to expect. I've never met any of these people. And I just know for a fact that people are going through the same emotions that I'm going through. And so I'm just like, you know, let me just give a speech and let them know that like, you deserve to be here. You know, mm -hmm. your hard work put you here. And, you know, um, all of the years that you have sacrificed is what led you up to this moment. And I just knew that it would just make everybody feel so much lighter. I'm very much sure the type of person that, you know, I, I don't like fearing things. Whatever I fear, I want to do. And so thinking about giving a speech, it was like a bit nerve wracking, but I'm just like, so what's, what's the worst thing that can happen? I mess up, it's, I'm human, you know? Mm -hmm. And so throughout the whole, 
you know, weekend, I just wanted to make sure that I build um, meaningful relationships, not only with the organizers, but also with the other squad members. And, you know, every room, every place that I go into, I want to just provide as much value as possible. And knowing that I've, I've been able to garner these skills from, you know, high school, being a senior class president and giving a speech in front of a thousand people, I know that I have built the skill to be able to get into it. I don't care if it's 10,000 people or 100,000 people, everything that I'm saying comes from the heart. And so I'm not, it doesn't really, you know, nothing deters me away from mm -hmm. being able to put myself in a little bit of an uncomfortable position to make sure that others feel appreciated and felt related to. You know, what you said that there's people in that room feeling the same thing. I mean, even on the brand side, you know, a lot of them, they haven't met anyone, no. you know, and, you know, they're maybe shy about going and speak, going up and talking to people. Yeah. Um, but also like, you know, it's, it, it's a seemingly small thing, but being able to go up to, to someone at the brand and say, hey, I really like, I just really appreciate that this is, and just show appreciation, excitement. And like, if you get to do that in person, great. If not, like, doing that through your posts and showing that excitement. I mean, you know, these are things that, that these posts are getting seen by senior leadership. I mean, we get emails forwarded all the time from, you know, 30, 40, $50 billion companies mm -hmm. from their CEOs being like, oh, I love this post. Right. Look at this post, oh, this is great. It's got thousands of likes and look at all the people in the comments yeah. talking, you know, this, this stuff gets them excited right yeah. and, and and i think that like you just did such a good job of like taking that moment i feel like and really like having it focused on yeah like the community that was there you really felt that right that you wanted to get to know the people at four you wanted to get to know the squad you wanted to get to know the people at sephora the brand founders who were coming in to speak to us and give us their your, their time mm -hmm. but i also have to say i think it felt really uh it felt really authentic and mm -hmm. i was i was really impressed with it and i think it's just a such a good reminder to, to creators that um, this business isn't just about content. Absolutely. Right? What are your What are your goals? Where does this take you? What do you want to What do you want to do with this? Where do you see this all going for you? Yeah, I definitely want to build with brands. I, I want to work with them more on a not just on a social media side, but I guess more on a you know deeper marketing end of things to just you know, how can we help to make men feel more seen? It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be me, whether it be helping them, you know, scheme through people that they can possibly use or setting up meetings and setting up all of these campaigns because at the end of the day, I believe that those things matter very much so. At the end of the day, the people that were championing for me are, are felt and, and heard um, in the, you know, in the rooms that I am able to get into. You know, Sephora Squad is amazing in terms of just giving me the opportunity to be able to speak to brown found, brand founders, you know, like, you know, you speaking to the person directly, You're not just, you know, I'm not talking to any, any middle mm -hmm. person, I'm talking to the person that created the brand. Not many people have the opportunity to do that. You know, 16,000 people applied to the application, mm -hmm. to, the, to the Sephora squad, and I was, what, out of 50, yeah, one, 60 people, one out of 60 people, something like that. you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that is really, really huge, and I'm just like, what other person is gonna have the opportunity to get the position that I'm in, but also have the same mentality that I have that is not, it's bigger than me, it's so much bigger than me. I have a lot of testimonials that really impacted me so much in my creative journey and still to this day, every time I feel a little lazy, I just think about those people that are like, wow, like, you know, there's this one that was like, they wrote me a, uh, a testimonial in the email and that I really appreciated that and it was just like I helped save their life wow. in terms of just I talk about a lot of mental health and a lot of the things that I was struggling with and I just felt a, a sense of loneliness and it was just like you know the fact that you were able to you know get on here and talk about it and be vulnerable and open up to you know hundreds and potential millions of people to see you um, struggle you know and in that sense it just made me realize that I can go into a room and talk to somebody one on one that can help me, yeah. you know, get my life together, and that to me was so meaningful to me. And but you know, it's so I got so many testimonials that really like put things into better perspective for me. That I realized there's so much bigger than just you know sewing a product. There's so much bigger than just you know wanting to get famous or wanting to get you mm -hmm. know these viral videos because. I'm like, people are having a human experience and people are struggling, like I said, and I, I once remember being very lonely. And so being able to you know, help 
impact people in that sense was just you know so life changing for me, and I'm forever grateful for it. For, for, the, for you guys having the testimonial process in place. That to me was, even if I did not get in, I know this is mm -hmm. something that a lot of people say, but just hearing the level of impact that I was able to have on my audience was was more more than more than anything that I yeah. could have ever asked for. That's one of the things that's so amazing. People are like, oh, do, do you get a lot of like pushback or, or anger about people who don't get in? And you're like, no, like yeah. people are just grateful proud of themselves for doing it, grateful to get the testimonials, Absolutely. you know. Well, I love that. And we will be watching and listening mm -hmm. and cheering you along and, and excited to, you know, continue working with you this year in Sephora Squad and, and beyond. And, and congratulations on all the success and, and thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure.